The next thing we're going to take care of is Composer. For a couple of reasons really, we're going to need it for the auto loading, so in order to create any more of our application we're going to need it and also further down the line we're going to add Redis and use that as part of our querying. So let's go ahead and add Composer now. It's going to be a number of steps which will include adding Composer to our PHP image, copying our Composer JSON file into there and then installing all of our dependencies adding our working files and then finally running Composer dump auto load and then auto loading will be working for us. As you can see my docker file has become quite a mess with a lot of the comments here but these are some of the best resources which I found currently on the web which explain some of the decisions I made about how I'm going to create this file. So I'll talk you through these one by one and I'll also leave these comments on this file which is a step that I don't normally do but when I push this to get up it means that you can go and check out these resources yourself and um, do a bit of your own research should you want to do that. Okay so the first thing we want to do is allow super user so we are going to set this because we are going to use composer as a super user all times which is what you do inside a docker container. And the way we're going to do this is with an environment variable. The way we specify an environment variable in a Docker Compose file is with this EMV and the environment variable is composer allow super user and then we're setting it to one to mean true. Now we want to obtain composer and we actually want it inside our image, inside of our container, not inside its own container. And so how can we do that? Well, we can do it by actually going and getting a composer image and copying it into our own and we can do this like so. So the command for this is copy. We are copying from the composer 2.4 image and the parts that we are copying are this user bin composer into the same location in our own image. And so if you want to know more about what we've done there, you can check out this article here, this uh, Docker page on multi-stage builds. Multi-stage builds is actually something which we are going to touch on later on when we go and add Xdebug to this. So all will be covered and explained in detail. Moving on, what I want to do now is copy my composer JSON and my composer lock files. And the reason I'm doing this is to take advantage of the Docker cache because when Docker sees that something has changed, then it will rebuild the entire image from that step onwards. So if things haven't changed, if things are the same as the last time you ran build, then it will just grab the parts from the cache. And so like you see here, this is enough to take advantage of Docker cache and Composer install will be executed only when Composer JSON or Composer Lock have changed. So if those things haven't changed, we're not building new stuff, we're just grabbing things from the cache. And so again, we are copying, we are copying from App Composer, and so we're using a wildcard, so this can mean Composer JSON or Composer Lock, and they will be copied into this location inside of our container. The next command is our install command. So this is just your typical composer install. We're not installing our dev dependencies because we will use those locally and I'll show a way how we can do that. The rest of these options may or may not be familiar to you. Just check out the composer docs if you need to look anything up. This one here, no interaction is quite important because we just want the install to go smoothly without a user being prompted for any interaction. And so that's what that one does. Our next step is to copy our application files to the working directory. So the working directory is the default directory which will be used for our container. And what you'll find is they'll typically come, typically come with a default. You can actually change that. If I was to say work der, and then I could change this to whatever I wanted, like so. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to go and see what the default working directory is and I'll probably end up using that. And so I can find out my working directory by running this command here. So docker exec, the IT option means give me like an interactive terminal and the sh after the container name means shell. So it's like I'm shelling into the container and then the location which you see when you initially do that, that is actually your default working directory. So I think we'll stick with that. We'll come out of there and just while I remember, we'll go back to the docker compose file. And so I've been sort of using this as the working directory. Might as well change this while we're here. Far. 
Okay, good. So this means that now we're going to be mounting from this directory into this one inside of the container. I'll also need to make this change to my default.com file for my Nginx. I'll do that shortly, but if you want to go ahead and do that now, then that's totally fine. Let's go and see what we've got left to do. The final act is to run Composer Dump Autoload. And so those are the basic steps that you need in order to add Composer to your container and to install your dependencies. Let's now go and add a Composer JSON file. So inside of app, behind the scenes, I'll just add some values here. Okay, so it's a fairly basic Composer JSON file. You've got the author details, etc., and uh, repo details at the top. In the require section, so we're saying that this project requires at least PHP 8, uh, PDO extension, PDO MySQL extension, and then these parts are going to be important later on. We're asking for Symphony Cache and a package called Predis, uh, which is used for working with PHP and Redis. Um, dev requirements, we're going to ask for PHP unit and we'll add some tests to this or just a basic test as like a demo thing later on. Auto loading, and so we're making a mapping between the app namespace and a folder called SRC. So I might as well go and create that now while I remember. And scripts, I've just added one simple little script to the bottom so we can just say composer run PHP unit and it will run this command. Before I run this, I will actually need to make sure that my root matches what I've just changed this to, my docker compose file. Okay, so let's actually go and try to build this. I'm going to say docker compose down first of all. Okay, and then I'm going to say docker compose up dash dash build so that means it will look at my docker files and build images for me and then again it will say hyphen d which means run it in detached mode so i'll get the terminal handed back to me okay let's go so you can see some of the new stages there as you can see it's copying composer running composer install and now it's starting up my containers so you can see that top one is actually the network, so the network of containers, and then we have the actual uh, services, containers which we created for our database, for the server, and for our application. Let's have a little scroll up and see if we can see all of those stages of the build happening. And so we've got stage one, which is getting the PHP image. Two, we are adding our extensions. Three is where we are getting Composer. Four, we are copying our composer JSON file and our composer lock file. Five, this is where we run the installation and then we are copying the contents of our app directory into the working directory and then we just run composer dump autoload. Then the final stages are which Docker takes care of for us. It gives the image its own unique hash and then names it for us. Okay, so here we are. So far, so good. However, there is a problem with this, and I'll show you that now. If I go and look inside of my container again, and I list everything in here in the working directory, if I've run Composer install, then I really should be able to see a vendor directory here, but I don't see a vendor directory here, and so why is that? This means that I don't have any of my dependencies which I thought I'd installed. Well, they were installed. However, when I go and do a volume mounting like I'm doing here, basically this overwrites anything which is already in here. And so even though I did install to this location, actually it's this folder which is being mirrored into this location. And so there are a couple of ways which we can get around this. I'll show you both of them. The first one is to do this. By just saying far www HTML vendor, if I specify just the one location, basically I am saying protect this location inside the container. Don't overwrite it. Whatever gets put into there when this container is built, make sure it gets preserved, regardless of whether I do any other volume mountings. So if I go and run 
Docker Compose up again. I think I can do it with that build. And we'll go inside the container again, list everything. Okay, so this time we now see that our vendor folder is in there. Basically, we've preserved this location so that it can't be overwritten. And so yes, that's one way of doing it, that's perfectly valid. However, I'm going to think about doing this a different way because my two different use cases between development and production are starting to diverge a little here. This is something which I'd only really need to do in development because in production I'm just going to copy the files, they'll get copied into the container and they won't need to be touched again. Once they're in the container in production then the files are there. Whereas here I'm actually still currently working on them and that's the main reason why I have this mapping. So if I go and make a change to a file then it'll be straight away reflected without having to build anything again. There's other things which I'd like to change. So this build stage here where I'm actually building from a docker file in production. I don't want to do that. What I want is a similar thing to this to happen. It just goes and pulls an image, creates a container from that. So the executive decision I'm going to make on this is to have two docker compose files. I'm going to keep this one for production and then I'm going to have one which I'll use for my development environment. I'll just give it a different name like docker compose dot local or something along those lines and then I'll be able to do what I want in that one, create my development environment exactly how I want it, but then I'll still have this preserved Docker Compose file for my production environment. Let's work on that one next.